By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we're going to look at a match between a disco troll deck and a, um, I guess you could say, Urnum Geddon deck. The deck is called Pay 8. And this is a match played in the uh, quarterfinals of the Reprint Master. So every Tuesday, I have a match for you from this tournament. And what makes this tournament so unique is that you can only play with reprints, right? You can only play with cards that are printed in 4th edition, Chronicles, or Revised. Now, obviously, you can play with the original card coming from Alpha if you want to, or with the reprint version, but they have to be printed in Revised, Chronicles, or 4th edition. Now, if you want to know more about the specifics, ins and outs of this rule set, check the description below because there you will find um, a link to the tournament website and also some more information about the rules. For example, we do play with Mana Burn in this format. And uh, in the quarterfinals, we see Baron Nick playing with his Pay 8 deck and he's playing against Colin with the Disco Inferno deck, the Disco Troll Brew. So this is gonna be quite interesting. Now, before I start with the deck text, like always, you can also skip that part of the video. How can you do that? It's pretty simple. Go to the description below. There you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. Click on there, that will take you straight to the action. You can also find timestamps to the specific deck deck. So if you wanna know more about a specific deck, simply go to the deck you'd like to see. Click on that specific timestamp. Okay, that is enough information. Now let's start with the deck deck. I'm gonna start with the deck of Baron Nick Pay 8. Let's have a look. And here we see the deck of Baron Nick. And maybe this deck kind of rings a bell. So this deck is called Pay 8. Um, and if you recognize this deck, that makes sense. It probably means you saw the episode of last week because then we also saw this deck in action fighting for a top 8 spot. And Baron Nick actually won the top 16 match. Hence, he is here in the quarterfinals. So this deck has a very strong Urnum Gannon uh, look to it, right? Because we see the two Armageddons, we see the full play set of Urnum Gins. And just to refresh your memory, what Urnum Gannon wants to do is kind of get the ramp out, you know, Birds of Paradise, Mana Vault, Soul Ring in this case, and ramp up to creatures. And there are a lot, a lot of creatures in this deck. Actually, what I like about this build is it's really creature heavy. It wants to win with combat damage. And I like that. I like creatures. I like the combat step. I think it's super interesting. I love to cast big creatures. So I kind of like it. And what he wants to do is he wants to get the ramp out. Then he wants to play one of his big creatures out like the Urnum Jinn or the Sarah Angel, right? Once that is on the board, he wants to get this Armageddon out as fast as he can, right? Cast the Armageddon, wipe the lands, and then he's the one with like a big 4-4 flying Sarah Angel. The opponent has nothing and he can just bash in there. Now, there, are, there is something else I'd like to um, talk about in this deck, which I find quite interesting. That is the full play set of Ivory Towers and the two Sylvan Libraries. Sylvan Library, I think, is just one of the best in Shamans in Old School. I've actually gave it a number one spot in one of my top tens, and I'm not sure if that's still the way I feel about it. I feel it's more like a top three in Shaman than maybe the number one in Shaman, but I still feel it's a very powerful Old School Magic in Shaman. Now, what does this in Shaman do? It's one green and one to cast, and you can look at the top three cards of your library, put them in any order, and then you go to your draw step. Then you draw your card for turn. So that is just really good, right? And there's an extra here. There's a bonus, a very important bonus. You can actually draw a second and a third card if you want to, but you've got to pay four life each time you do it. So if you want to draw two cards extra, you got to pay eight life. This is pretty steep, but think of the ivory towers. Baronic is playing with four of them. So his strategy probably is gaining a lot of life with the ivory towers. Use that life, cash in that life, to get card advantage with the Sylvan Library. So I really like that. I have to say when I'm looking at this list, I'm kind of tempted to put in an extra Armageddon and an extra Sylvan Library, just because I feel like when you do put three in a deck, there's a chance that you always see them and it just seems so relevant. But I'm sure Baron, considering you've made it to the quarterfinals and you've probably tested this deck, you know better than I do. But that's just my first impression when I'm looking at this deck. I'm thinking maybe I would, add a third Sylvan and a third Armageddon. But that's just something in my head. I know when I when I add three of something to it, the, the likelihood of seeing it is it's really big. And when I put two of something, I just sometimes just don't see it at all in the whole game. And that can be quite frustrating when it's a key card in your deck. Okay, so this is the list 
of Baron. I think Baron is going to have a really tough opponent because he's playing against Colin and Colin has got a lot of solutions to big creatures. Let's take a look at Colin's deck, Disco Inferno. And here we see the list of Colin, including two really trendy disco shoes. I like it, Colin. So his deck is called Disco Inferno. I've also referred to it as a troll disco deck because it's, it has all those ingredients as well. And I really love the picture of the record at the back. This is really a cool uh, a deck photo, Colin. Well done, man. I really appreciate it. Um, and of course, Disco Inferno refers to the card Nevenerals Disc. Yeah, we all know it, the artifact for 40 cast, and then you can blow it up and it destroys everything on the board, except for Lance. And guess what? Baron's playing Armageddon. So if you combine Armageddon and Disc, you can like empty the whole board. If that happens, that's going to crack me up. That's going to be really funny. Anyway, uh, the other card he's referring to is a card we don't see that often, but it is a pretty strong card, Inferno, 2 red and 5 to cast, originally a card from the dark, and it deals 6 damage to every player and every creature, um, and I do believe you can still regenerate, actually you can, so it works really well with uh, a, a Troll Disco strategy, right, because what Troll Disco originally wants to do is use a Nevenerals Disc, discs to clean the board and then regenerate your own creatures. And we see often troll in this deck, three of those. We see four set trolls in the deck. Both of those creatures have regeneration. So seven creatures in the deck of Colin can actually easily regenerate. They can survive the Inferno and they can survive a Nevenerals disc. We also see two hippies in the deck. And I think, ooh, look at that. We see two demonic hordes. I almost looked over them. Those demonic hordes, they are Badass, Colin. I really like it that you've boarded them in. They're super risky against this deck because, you know, uh, uh, Baron is playing with, um, uh, you know, Baron is playing with Armageddon. And of course, for the people that don't know, uh, Demonic Hordes, it's, I believe, three black and three, so six to cast for a 5-5. Five, five. And during your upkeep, you got to pay three black. If you cannot pay the upkeep cost, it taps itself and your opponent gets to choose what land you have to destroy, right? So the Demonic Hordes wants to eat land. And if it cannot eat land from an opponent, you're going to have to sacrifice your own lands to it. And to make matters worse, your opponent gets to choose the land that you have to sacrifice. But if you can play, pay the three black, it's it remains untapped and it's got a really cool ability because you can tap it and it destroys the land. It's as simple as that. So tap destroy a land. I mean, Demonic Hordes, the art, I think is one of the better pieces of Jesper Mirfors. I really, really love those little devils, those little demons there. It's just fantastic art. I'm so happy you're playing it, Colin. And when we're looking actually at the rest of deck, it's not just your regular Disco Troll deck. There's also um, a huge um, a land destruction aspect in the deck. We see four Stone Rains and four Blights. Now remember, because of this format, you can only play with reprints, so Sinkhole is not an option. So instead, Colin has chosen to go for Blight. Blight is two black, Enchant Land. Once the land gets tapped, the land is destroyed. So if you play it on a tap land, it's not destroyed. It has to become tapped, that process. So your opponent can always choose, okay, I can use this land one last time. How am I going to use it? And because you're giving your opponent an option, that's probably why, you know, Blight is just not as good as Sinkle. Sinkle just destroys the land straight away. Blight doesn't, you know. Uh, Blight is really nice to use, by the way, with an Icy Manipulator, another card that cannot be played in this format because it's not reprinted in revised 4th edition or Chronicles. Uh, but yeah, if you're thinking about using Blight, just a little tip, you can use it with Icy, it's pretty cool. Um, okay, so we see eight land removal cards and um, uh, that Nevenerals Disc. So the strategy here of Colin is really, he wants to make sure that his opponent cannot do anything, you know, has no lands, has no permanence. That's pretty brutal, Colin. And then Colin just wants to attack with trolls. That's what he wants to do. But what I like here also are the two anime deaths, by the way, because, you know, he can play an in Inferno. And Inferno, I think, is going to have a huge impact on the board of Baron because Baron is playing a creature-heavy deck. So when I'm looking at this list, I mean, Colin, you are definitely the heavy favorite here. You've got so much against creatures. You can wipe all the creatures. You can regenerate your own creatures. And then you can use anime deaths to get the best and biggest badass creatures from Baron and, and let them fight on your side, basically. So that is huge. Of course, the weak spot here or those, unfortunately, those two demonic hordes, if you time them incorrectly and Baron casts an Armageddon, I think in general Armageddon is the one card here that that can give Baron that edge. But what Baron's deck is better in the sense that I think it's going to be better at ramping up 
playing a threat early and then hopefully for him playing out the Armageddon, you know, and kind of then lock the game so that Colin will not be able to cast um, a, a, a Nevenerals Disc or an Inferno. On the other hand, of course, Colin, you are playing with black. That means you've got access to Dark Ritual and you're playing with two of them. I think Dark Ritual, again, could be a card that can get you back into a game or can help you tempo, accelerate at the start of the game and play out enough before the Armageddon hits the board. So, yeah, this is going to be a really interesting matchup. I think when I'm looking at these lists, I think Colin is a slight favorite, but yeah, it's not set in stone. Definitely not. Okay, we've looked at both of the decks. We've discussed both of the decks. That means we're ready to go to the quarterfinals of the Reprint Masters. Baron Nick takes on Colin. Let's go. Game number one, here we go. So it looks like Baron's keeping his hand there. He's sitting on the left with the Taco Bolas play mat. I like that, man. And there we see Colin playing a basic mountain. And Baron starting with the Savannah into a Birds of Paradise. Will we see a Bolt the Bird? There is a Bolt the Bird. Okay, also in this game. <laughs> Sweet. Very classic. And an Ivory Tower. And okay, there's another land drop by Baron. For a moment there, I thought he didn't have any land. By the way, Colin, that's a cool playmat as well. Contract from below there. Arguably the best card in Magic. Look at this. Enemy dead on the Birds of Paradise. Wow, that is some interesting stuff. So it means he really wants mana and he wants to ramp up. Of course, Birds of Paradise is going to give him access to an early Nevenerals disc. And it's kind of hard to follow the life totals, by the way. It looks like Baron Nick is on some extra life here. There we see, ooh, this disenchant is so important on the Blood Moon because that Blood Moon would have been quite devastating for Baron, although he's got that basic planes, of course which allowed him to play the Disenchant. And here we see that ramping that we talked about, although he's not even ramping into it, he's just hard casting it, but still it's a good deal, four, five, four, four. And now Colin has to start playing something. Remember, he's got access to five mana because of that Birds of Paradise. And there we see a Nevenerals Disc. So Nevenerals Disc, and it comes into play tapped. And once it's untapped, you can pay one and you can destroy everything except for the lands. So could be interesting here. He could chump with the bird. So this is kind of showing to me that he's planning on using the disc. So he's chumped with it. Oh, Armageddon. Oh, -ho! this is so well done by Baron Wright. First attacking, offering Colin the chump, hoping that he's going to take it. He takes the chump because he wants to use the disc. And then there is that Armageddon. This is brutal. Absolutely brutal. And I mean, Baron just keeps attacking here. And Colin is slowly going down in life there. We can see him dropping to 11. And there's also that Spirit Link. Now he's found the Nevenerals Disc, able to pop it. I'm actually happy that means we're kind of going to get a game here. So destroying everything and we're starting all over again. We do see a Birds of Paradise by Baron. So he's got access to three mana already. There's the second land by Colin past turn. And now he can cast another creature. Exactly. There we see another Urnum. This is what Baron wants to do. Play out threat after threat after threat and just bash in. Remember, Colin's already on 11. It's going to be tough for him. He's on 7 now. There we see a Brain Geyser drawing two extra cards with that Brain Geyser. I mean, Baron's pretty much on fire here. And his life total, I believe, is on 22 or something. It's really decent as well. And... Let's see, he's on seven, drawing a card for turn, attacking again. Colin's going to go to three. He's got to find a solution here. Of course, the problem for Colin as well is playing with Inferno. If you're too low, Infer Inferno is useless. There we see Sarah Angel. I guess this is the game. Okay, this is game number one. Man, I mean, that that Baronic deck is just so many creatures. Like creature, 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 creature. It's like there's no stopping the train. So both of these players are going to sideboard. And uh, yeah, we'll, we'll find out if, if Colin gets to kind of you know, build up any board states in game number two. Game number two here. And uh, let's see if Colin can kind of, you know, find his pace. And maybe Baron cannot find his Armageddon. So Colin starting with the mountain here. Baron starting with that ivory tower again. So he's going to gain some life. Second red for Colin. Pass turn here. Some life gain there. Going to 22, I believe. Playing a tropical island. So two beautiful duels next to each other. Passing turn here. And what is Colin going to do? It looks like Colin is missing his land drop here. Oh, that is pretty brutal. We see a basic island by Baron. And oh, there is um, 
Is it called Active Volcano? It can return, it cannot destroy the land actually, Baron. It returns it to your hand or it destroys a blue permanent. So I think that Trop should actually go back to your hand. I'm not sure if the players, if they can find out what's happened here. It seems they can, they're just playing along. And it looks like he wants to discard his Armageddon. But okay, I think now maybe Colin is telling him it's actually returned to your hand, so he can just replay it. Now, that, of course, changes the whole scenario, right? Um, he's still going to discard the Armageddon, though. Uh, but at least he's got access to three lands. I think for Baron's deck, you really want to have four. It gives access to Juggernaut. It gives access to Urnum Jin. Although three is not too bad, because you get access to Surrender Perfeet. Look at Colin discarding Upton Troll. Are we going to see an Urnum now, by the way, or a Juggernaut here for Baron Nick? Oh, Colin, this is so disastrous, man. You gotta win this to, to uh, you know, to get that spot in the semifinals. Baron, you're so close to the semifinals of the reprint masters. And it looks like Colin has to discard again another often troll. There we see land number five. Are we gonna see a Sarah Angel? Ooh, we're actually gonna see a Juggernaut. I guess he just top decked that Juggernaut. And there at least is a land for Colin, so let's hope he can do something back, perhaps casting a Setch Troll. Okay, okay. Oh, Blue Elemental Blast on the Lightning Bolt. That is killer for Colin. I just wanted to say, okay, at least you got a solution for the Juggy. Juggy is going to go in. Colin dropping to 15. Oh, man. This is not good for Colin. And there is at least some more lands, that's something, and the set Troll. And he's got one open to regenerate it, but there is that brutal, brutal Swords to Plows here. It's Baron having all the answers at the moment. So it's removed from the game, at least Colin is gaining some life. Now he's going to drop 13. This is looking really bad for Colin. Three turns to go for him if he cannot find a solution for the Juggernaut. At least Baron is not playing out another threat, that's something. Okay, this is good. If this can stick... Cannot stick. Okay. <laughs> I keep, I'm sorry, man. I'm kind of rooting for Colin because I always wanted to go to a third game, but I fear this, man. I fear this. There we see another Juggernaut. Oh, man. And the deck is just going too fast for Colin. And, of course, Colin's having mana problems now in game number two. and game number one, he was just very unfortunate. That's it. That's it, man. This I think these games were shorter than the actual deck deck of this video. That's just crazy. Uh, still, man, congratulations, Baron Nick. Uh, obviously, when you get this far in the tournament, you always need a little bit of luck. I think in game one, maybe we can look back at that situation. That was just a killer. Uh, you attacking with your Urnum and um, Colin, rightfully so, deciding to chum block, thinking I can just activate my uh, Nevenerals disc next turn. And then after that chump, you cast that well-timed arm again, and this is fantastic. Uh, well, congratulations, Baron, and maybe we'll see you um, again next week, or of course in the finals. If you like the Reprint Masters, if you like what you're what you're seeing here, um, we have a playlist, of course, of the Reprint Masters as well, where you can see all the other matches that have been played so far. And also next week, Tuesday, we will have a fresh episode for you from the Reprint Masters, and then it's going to be the semifinals. So we're getting closer and closer to the actual finals of this exciting tournament. 45 Wizards started, now only four Wizards remain. Next week, Tuesday, a new episode right here on Timmy Talks. And if you're watching this channel, I'm sure that you would like to help the channel grow. There are three things that you can do completely, absolutely for free, and nada, niente, no pes, right? All you have to do is click the thumbs up, click that like button, it helps a lot. Another thing you can do, leave a comment, let me know what you think of these videos, and of course, if you have any questions or comments, feel free to spam the comment section. Go for it, man. Um, and then there's also the third thing you can do, you can hit that subscribe button. So if you're new here, welcome to the channel. Please consider subscribing, it really helps the channel grow. It tells YouTube that Timmy Talks is an important channel and that they need to show Timmy Talks videos more and more in the YouTube feeds for all the uh, individual users who enjoy Magic the Gathering content. Okay, so that's for that part. Then there's one last thing that you can do and that's you can become a sponsor of the show. You can become a patron of the show, just like Baron and Colin. And the cool thing is if you become a patron, and you can do that by the way, by clicking on the info card that's appearing right now, that will take you to patreon.com slash Timmy Talks where you can find all the info. You can already sponsor the channel with $1 a month. The cool thing is if you do, you get access to the tournaments that I organize to thank my channel members 
and patrons for their support. So you can join that stuff. You can also join the Discord. There's a channel pin. There's like, there's just, there's just a lot of stuff happening. And of course, your name will appear in the end scroll. How cool is that? Talking about the end scroll, let's go and let's take a look at the fantastic, the amazing, the wunderbar channel members and patrons of Timmy Talks. Let's go to the end scroll. Ik het als fikker te somber kan zien.